Um, without dropping any spoilers, tell us just a little bit about the final stop. Uh, final stop is about a girl kind of uh, going home alone at night and um, kind of the perils that can befall you mm -hmm. uh, on just a what would seem like a typical journey home on a bus. And it's billed as a film you need to listen to. Yeah. Explain, because uh, it, it's recorded in a special type of sound, and yeah. you, you, you listen to it with earphones. Yeah. Yeah, so how does that work? Uh, well, Sennheiser has this product called the um, Ambio Smart Headset, or ASH. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was actually the reason that I was so interested in, in doing it, because we use Sennheiser for everything mm -hmm. on set uh, and in post. You know, that's like kind of the number one microphone that you want to use. Uh, for sound quality, and um, they're kind of, they're both headphones and microphones. Mm. So uh, it was kind of just an interesting challenge to take on because mm -hmm. they wanted to make something to show that like anyone could make a film. So it was shooting kind of how Sean Baker did Tangerine, like we were yeah. shooting on smartphones. Okay. Uh, and then with the added element of instead of using professional sound, we were literally using the headphones to record all the sound on set. Yeah, so we had a few different pairs of them uh, kind of set around for um, ambiance and mm -hmm. room tone. And then we also had, um, my DP had a set on. I did have a sound team who had sets as well um, that they actually made like little earmuffs for when we were getting all of our outside stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so it was a really interesting process to try to like figure out how to make it work because it's, it's also binaural, uh -huh. which is almost like you're doing 3D sound to a 2D picture. So it's like VR 3D sound, mm -hmm. but for film. So it really kind of dictated how I chose to shoot it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to try to get things more from like a rear perspective behind someone. Mm -hmm. um, and like testing them out as well. I went down into like the subways in LA, which no one goes to. Um, <laughs> we don't have public transportation really. Uh, but it was really fascinating. I found that like all of the things that you would hear behind you were really interesting. What was like coming by your mm -hmm. your kind of field of vision. So it was kind of plotting out not just uh, what the visuals were, but what like the sound field would be ahead mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. Which a lot of time in in horror, obviously, that's like one of your most important, important aspects things, yes, is sound, yes. of course. Um, but you don't really think of it. I don't think as much in like planning your shots. Uh, in pre-pro as much as you do in post when you're adding in different sound elements and bringing mm. in the score and and uh, foley and things like that. So, so the, the, it's a new technique to obviously to you. It must have thrown up some challenges. Well, we went out and tested it quite yeah. a bit with the sound team. Um, and then we had uh, the Ambio team and the Sennheiser team as well mm -hmm. who were like tech experts. So we had like their whole their whole team kind of like to, to call on and and kind of see what else had been done or how like anything that they had come across mm -hmm. um, because it was something that didn't seem to have really been done before of making a real narrative. Uh, anything that I had seen of the product being used was more straightforward, almost like um, how you would see like GoPro stuff shot, you know, mm -hmm. like it was very first person or um, vlog style. And so this was trying to figure out like will people follow the sound the same way they do the picture and just accept that you're cutting from one perspective to another with your sound field as well, which you do in normal film without mm. even thinking about it, but will the same thing occur in a 3D atmosphere was like a big question um, that was actually very kind of difficult to figure out. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like shot a couple things and like cut them together ahead of time to see how that would work. And it's really interesting. It seemed to depend on the viewer, like oh. whether they went along with it or whether, uh, whether it kind of was jarring to them. So that mm. definitely affected like the different ways that I chose to shoot it to kind of give a more fluid change of perspective mm -hmm. to the soundscape. So anytime that we're changing perspective, there's a little more of like a, almost like a creative lag in between things. You wouldn't just do sharp cuts, cuts yeah. in between the sound fields. Otherwise it becomes like very confusing mm -hmm. about which direction you're supposed to be facing. So yeah, there were like definitely some things to figure out, but it was very, it was a very cool process to figure out. Also the like shooting on a smartphone at night <laughs> was like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that was a challenge. What did you take from it all? In the end, what do you think? Did, what did the whole process? What did you take from it? Um, I think it's. I mean, honestly, it's something I'd love to see somebody try to do a feature with, uh -huh. like a full feature, just to see that effect. 
because uh, I really love the VR horror experiences that I've uh -huh. that I've done. You know, at various festivals, seem to be cropping up more and more. More and more, yeah. Um, so to see it done like completely as a feature with that kind of tech, I think would be really interesting. Also, I'm very interested to see like an entire theater full of people wearing headphones mm -hmm. <laughs> and how that will well, what, yeah. how that will play out. Yeah. Uh, it's not something you would expect, or, or you know, you think as a filmmaker, it's not something you really want to see is like your film on a small screen with like people wearing headphones but there's so much of that's how people consume well, media now that I think it's an interesting look at like different ways we can get to different audiences with narrative rather than just um, online video content in mm -hmm, a way mm -hmm. uh, that that allows people to be like brought into kind of more of like a horror genre space with this mm -hmm. kind of tech so it's I don't know it's a fun really fun experiment. Thank you.